Hello everybody, I am uh, Dr. Jolly Benjamin and in this video presentation I am going to speak about blood and blood related disorders. Let us understand what is blood. Blood is the basis of our existence. Without blood there would be no life. So whether you have, you have a perfect heart or you have the perfect arteries, the perfect capillaries and the perfect veins in your body but if you do not have blood, then you cannot live. So blood is the basis of our existence. Blood flows through your capillaries, through the veins, through the arteries, and finally to the heart from where it is pumped to various organs of your body where it is needed. What are the main functions of blood? Number one, blood provides nourishment to every cell and every tissue of your body. Blood provides oxygen. It detoxifies your body by taking out carbon dioxide from various tissues and cells of your body and giving them to the lungs from where you expire it out. Blood carries a lot of important hormones. The hormones are your growth hormones which help you to grow and then you have insulin which controls your blood sugar you have your hormones which make you differentiate whether you're a male or a female you have the testosterones for the males you have the estrogens and the progesterones for the females so how are these substances reaching your target organs they are being carried by your blood components of blood. Blood is a living tissue made up of liquid and solids. The liquid part called plasma is made of water, salts and protein. Over half of the blood is plasma. The solid part of the blood contains red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. What are the functions of blood cells? The primary function of red blood cells or erythrocytes is to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. Hemoglobin is an important protein in the red blood cells that carries oxygen from the lungs to all parts of our body. The primary function of white blood cells or leukocytes is to fight infection. There are several types of white blood cells and each has its own role in fighting bacterial, viral, fungal and parasitic infections. The primary function of platelets or thrombocytes is blood clotting. They group together to form clumps or a plug in the hole of a vessel to stop bleeding. What is the first thing that doctors recommend when you come to them when you are sick? Even before an x-ray, or an ultrasound or any other specific diagnostic tests, a doctor will first tell you to take a simple blood test because a simple blood test reveals a lot about your present condition. So examination of the blood can be considered in two categories that is the analysis of plasma and the analysis of your blood cells. Blood disorders. Blood disorders can be classified as acute or chronic and they can also be classified as inherited or acquired. So what are inherited blood disorders? Inherited blood disorders are the disorders which you have from your birth because they are passed on from your parents or your grandparents to you and acquired are the ones that you get later on in life which could be due to a medical reason or due to ill health or due to a nutritional deficiency. So there are many blood disorders. A lot, there's a whole lot of classifications on blood disorders. But we will talk specifically on just a few important diseases which you need to know. So these diseases could be classified as bleeding disorders, anemias and blood cancers which are commonly known as leukemia. So let's talk about haemophilia. Hemophilia, this, this is a group of inherited blood disorders which are exclusive to the males. 
females are carriers of this disease that means they can give the disease but they they will not have the disease they will just carry the disease and it is usually passed from the female from the mother to her son and in this group of diseases there is abnormal bleeding without any reason it could be due to you there could be uncontrolled bleeding due to a trauma if you fell down or you got hurt the bleeding would not stop or there could be sudden internal bleeding with no reason at all and why does this happen in a normal person you have what it's called clotting factors which are present in your plasma these clotting factors are special proteins that are made by your liver and put into your blood stream so if there is any injury to any part of your body these clotting factors will go to that vessel and form a clot or a plug and stop the bleeding but children who have hemophilia they do not have or they lack these clotting factors so as a result they are unable to form a plug to that vessel which results in continuous bleeding the treatment is infusion of ffps which is fresh frozen plasma which contains all the clotting factors which are needed for them to lead a normal life there are two types of hemophilias hemophilia a and hemophilia b out of which hemophilia a is the most common and it is found in 85% of people with hemophilia now let's talk about anemia if you break this word it is a loss or a lack of blood and anemia anemia is blood so you have a lack of blood now anemia can be severe it can be mild so if you have mild anemia usually you will have no symptoms or just mild symptoms maybe you'll be slightly tired you might think it's like you had a stressful day and that's why but it could also be that you could have mild anemia due to nutritional factors but yes if the anemia is severe there is profound fatigue tiredness palpitations and pallor which accompanies anemia iron deficiency anemia iron is an important element which is needed to make red blood cells so if your bone marrow will not have a good depot of iron it would not be able to produce a good amount of red blood cells which are needed for your day to day activities as a result you will slowly develop iron deficiency anemia now iron deficiency anemia it could be either due to increased demand or due to decreased intake so what are the conditions where there's increased demand for iron that is during pregnancy during menstruation and during your growth period where you have an increased demand for iron or due to decreased intake that could be if you are a specific vegetarian or you have a nutritional deficiency especially in the lower economic uh, classes you will see that iron deficiency anemia is very profound so what is the treatment for iron deficiency anemia you are usually given iron supplements for a period of 3 months after which your hemoglobin level is again checked and if it is there if the the hemoglobin level reaches the uh, the specific requirement then you are given iron supplements for the next 3 months so that you have a good depot of iron stores in your body thalassemia it's a group of inherited disorders thalassemia can be divided into alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia now beta thalassemia it could be thalassemia intermedia it could be minor or it could be major depending upon the symptoms the children are regularly transfused so if you are thalassemia minor you do not need regular transfusions if you are intermedia then also you do not require regular transfusions but if you are a thalassemia major you require chronic regular transfusions in order to survive
a person who has thalassemia, his clinical symptoms depend on whether he's getting therapy or he's not getting the appropriate therapy. So if a child is getting regular transfusions, then he has complications of iron overload for which chelation therapy is a must. And if a child is not getting transfusions, then of course he has a very severe, profound anemia, which later on leads to death. Sickle cell anemia, this is a genetic condition which mostly affects African Americans. In this anemia, periodically the red blood cells will change their shape. They will, normally red blood cells are oval or round in shape, but in sickle cell they turn, they take the shape of a sickle, like a crescent, uh, like a moon, like a crescent moon. They take the shape and what does this, uh, what does this cause? It causes blockage of the vessels, which leads to painful crisis. People who get this, are when they have these pain crises, they are in severe pain. And the usual treatment is blood transfusions. Now what can trigger the cells from to sickle? It could be stress or it could be a medication. Or it could even be a, a food. Uh, there are special beans which are known as fava beans which can cause sickling of red blood cells and then there's a very interesting fact to know that people who have sickle cell anemia are protected from malaria those people who have sickle cell anemia will not have malaria lymphomas this is a form of blood cancer in which uh, the cancer develops in the lymphatic system. There are two main kinds of lymphomas which are very uh, common. One is Hodgkin's lymphoma and the other is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Then we come to leukemias. Leukemias, it's a form of, it's also a form of blood cancer. Now what happens in leukemias? It's blood cancer. Like you have, what do you have in your bone marrow? You have red blood cells and white blood cells. Like everything grows and multiplies in proportion but in leukemia what happens just one particular group of cells will multiply so much that they will not give the other cells a chance to grow and divide and usually it happens mostly with white blood cells like what happens these white blood cells become dominant and they will keep multiplying and keep multiplying in the bone marrow so what you actually see when you'll take a CBC sample, when you'll go for a blood count, you will see just one particular blood uh, cell, which has a, like the count is like in millions and thousands. So that is blood cancer. And these days blood cancer, they're treated with uh, cytotoxic drugs and transplantation, bone marrow transplantation. And these days, with proper treatment, leukemia is curable. Now let us talk about blood disorders that affect the platelet counts. So if the platelet count goes low, it is known as thrombocytopenia. If the platelet count goes higher than necessary, it is known as thrombocytosis. So let us talk about thrombocytopenia when the platelet count goes low. What are the symptoms of thrombocytopenia? You will have pictichia, those are small <coughs> bruises on your skin. But it is important to differentiate thrombocytopenia from hemophilia. In hemophilia, you usually see the bleeding into larger joints. They could be your knee joints or your elbow joints. Whereas in thrombocytopenia, the pictichia could occur anywhere in your body, but not into your joints. The bleeding will not be there into your joints. And the bleeding is not very heavy like you see in hemophilia. Now there is a condition known as idiopathic thrombocytopenia. Platelet count suddenly becomes less in your body due to an unknown reason. Usually it could be a viral infection and you would see that once you have recovered from your viral illness, the platelet count goes back to normal. Then you have the heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Usually heparin, it's a medication which is used as a blood thinner. 
it keeps the blood thin so usually people uh, after a myocardial infarction or what you call heart attack people are put on heparin to keep the blood from clotting so usually people those who are on heparin what happens is it can lead to very low counts of platelets it could decrease heparin can decrease the number of platelets in your body so what is the treatment just stop the stop the drug for a particular time now we'll talk about a condition which is known as dic or disseminated intravascular coagulopathy now what happens in this if a person has has a severe infection or sepsis so what happens in this process is that your clotting factors are all used up so now once all the clotting factors are used up so the body is unable to prevent bleeding so in this the body of the person will bleed from everywhere and then after that once the person reaches the last stage of dic then he cannot be saved no matter whatever transfusions you give him of fresh frozen plasmas so the treatment is usually in the first initial stage where you give the patient fresh frozen plasma to prevent him going into the dissemination intravascular coagulopathy blood borne diseases now these are diseases which are spread by direct or indirect contamination of blood so there are some the most classic examples of blood borne diseases are hiv and hepatitis there are also vector borne diseases now these are diseases which are not spread directly by contamination of blood but by an insect and the most classic example is malaria like when the malarial mosquito bites somebody then it is transmitted the infection is transmitted through the blood and then you have blood borne diseases which are spread through sexual contact and intravenous drug abuse and that is why when people those who are on regular transfusions or those who require blood the blood undergoes screening what does screening do it screens the blood for major infections like hiv and hepatitis b so now how can we prevent blood related disorders number 1 which is most important is to undergo a blood test before marriage to understand the hereditary factors by learning about symptoms of certain diseases and last but not the least listening to the advice of your doctor and changing your lifestyle